All right. So we're going to start off with our first vocabulary term. This is referred to. Oops, I started with the O. Oh, it's coordinate. Plane. Or sometimes you'll also hear it called a coordinate grid. How many sections do you see this coordinate plane divided into? There are four. And we start with, this is the first one, and it's labeled often with, you'll see a Roman numeral that looks like a capital I. Bless you. And it's the second quadrant is over here on the left. So let's label this one two. Anybody want to guess where number three is? It is the bottom left. Down here is quadrant three. And then here's where things get a little bit interesting because Roman numerals <coughs> have their own system. And this is the Roman numeral for four. My dad loves Roman numerals. He, he likes to try to figure out these long strings of numbers and what they stand for. I'm going to show you real quick, though. As you saw, one is just like a column of one, right? Two has two bars. Three has three bars. And those all make sense just visually looking at them, don't they? The next one is four. What's five? Five is the V. What's six? Six is V and another one. Oh, so it's just flipped around? Well, what this is saying is I'm one less than five. And this is five. And then this one is like saying five plus one, or one more than five, right? Yeah. So the numbers are always doing addition and subtraction? They're always, they're either counting up or they're doing an addition subtraction. Because then this is seven, and this is eight, but this is nine. So what do you think 10 is? Yeah. What do you think 11 is? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a cool system, isn't it? I'm what's, sure it's 25. I think I'd have to go look. What is 20? I think 25 is this. Think about Super Bowl numbers. They're counted in Roman numerals, right? I know what is 50? Is L. Is it L? <laughs> but I think this is 49. Because it's one before. Oh, well, back to our regular lesson. Sorry, a little sidetracking on Roman numerals because they're kind of funny and different, right? So coordinate plane quadrants are, you'll always see them labeled, I shouldn't say always because sometimes people might not do it, but they are commonly labeled with Roman numerals, so I want you guys to use them as we're working with them, okay? Now I've got a little bit of an unusual way for you guys to cut this. You're going to have to kind of eyeball it. And it might be easiest to do one side at a time. Because what I want my scissors to do is run along this here, this line, and cut. So that when I open this, I'm going to see just this quadrant when I'm finished. Is it like this? Mm -hmm. So fold it up to the center line, like this, and then use your scissors and cut along the other center line like this. Cut both of them so you have four doors.
If anybody needs help, I've got mine done and I can help. Good. That's perfect. You got it. Okay, and then for the rest of our work today, you guys are going to need three different colors. I would prefer two of them to be a color and one of them to probably be black. I'm not sure. Let's see. You're fine. Okay, so you choose one of your colors, and on the outside, we're going to label the quadrants. And because we want to remember to pronounce it as quadrant and then its number, above each one, we're going to write the word quadrant. How many of you know what the number four is in Spanish? Cuatro. Cuatro, quad come from the same root, which means four. And quarter comes from that also. How many quarters make up a dollar? Mm -hmm. That Q-U-A. Is a root word for four. This one is quadrant two. Quadrant three. Sure. And quadrant four. And look at how much you guys have already learned. Bless you. You know, we've got a root word of quad, which is standing for four. You've learned some things about Roman numerals. And then I want you guys to show, in the United States, we're used to seeing things moving from left to right. That's how we read normally, correct? Yes. But this one is moving from right, and it's kind of going this way. Quadrant one starts, and quadrant two is next to its left. And then we circle down to quadrant three, and we keep circling around to quadrant four. So I want you to show just that little movement and that might help you remember when you don't have your notes in front of you. We start with quadrant one and why is it quadrant one? It's all the positive numbers, right? I know you guys have graphed on things like this before and especially in elementary school, but little kids when they first learn how to do these kinds of graphs, they're only graphing in quadrant one. They don't even know the others are there. So make your circle on there and your arrows. And then we need to get inside this and start labeling some vocabulary on the inside. And I need you guys to be with me pretty quick. We're getting close on time. Okay. Open up, please. I want you to take one of your colors and color code this line going straight across. And we're going to show that this going across, I'm using the color green, is the x-axis. And I always remember that the x-axis goes across just like if I make an x, what is it doing? It's crossing itself, right? So the x-axis goes across. And then a different color to color code going down. And this is the Y axis. And just use your finger and in the air, I want you to make a Y. What does Ys do? They go up and down. 
So that's how you can remember. The x goes across just like the x literally crosses itself. And the y axis goes up and down just like when you make a y, it goes up and down. Okay. Another vocabulary term that we're going to be using often is right here. Please label this center where the two lines cross as the origin. It's always where we start every time we graph. And then over here is our final vocabulary term for today, an ordered pair. Ordered pairs are always in parentheses. The x term comes first, the y term comes second. And I want you guys to think about this as the x goes across left or right, and the Y goes up or down. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys some ordered pairs and we're gonna graph a few. The first pair I would like to see you graph is three comma five. Again, we always start at the origin and we do the first number going left or right. In which direction are we going for three? Over to the right. And then the five goes up. One, two, three, four, five, right here. And let's label that as three comma five. Okay, over in this quadrant, I would like you to write this ordered pair. Negative six, negative two. Always, always, always we start at the what? The origin, and we're moving to the left, six. Oops, I put a negative two, I meant positive two here. If I'm going to be in this quadrant, I have to go left first and then up two. So this is negative six comma two. We have two points to go. Negative three comma negative five. That's going to move us to the left three and down five right here. And finally, we have six comma negative four. Starting at the origin, we would move to the right six and down one, two, three, four. And that's it for taking our notes. This will need to get glued into your spiral on page 32.